Welcome to another edition of Hungry for History. I'm Luchana Spraker with the City of Savannah Municipal Archives. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce a presentation featuring Turner Hunt, archeological technician with the Muscogee Creek Nation's Historical and Cultural Preservation Department. It's easy for visitors to our city to think Savannah's history started in 1733 with the landing of James Oglethorpe and the British colonization of Georgia. Mr. Hunt's presentation reminds us this region was already populated by the tribes associated with the Muscogee Creek Nation. He walks us through the history that led to the removal of the Native American people from this region, as well as an update on the current status of the Muscogee Creek Nation. I hope you enjoy this history of the Muscogee Creek Nation told in their own words. Just don't go on hello. My name is Turner Hunt. I'm the archeological technician for the Muscogee Creek Nation Historic and Culture Preservation Department. I'm coming to you pre-recorded from the Muscogee Creek Nation Reservation in Indian Territory. I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself in the Muscogee language. Dona Choho Chifkaros. I'm a legata konopogi doez. Moment amatova teledigi doez. I just identified myself, my tribal town, and my clan. This type of introduction is older than the concepts of Creek Nation, so there's nothing in the introduction that says I'm Muscogee or Creek. Uh, this identity is centered on the tribal town, which I'll discuss a little bit more in the future. Uh, but without further ado, thank you again for joining me, uh, and let's begin. Again, I want to thank you for listening to this talk today. Uh, I would like to discuss the Muscogee Creek Nation government and history. It is through these events and treaties that we have sovereignty, citizenship, and jurisdictional authority. Many of these concepts can be, can be traced to specific points in time uh, through our interactions with uh, European powers and the early United States government. And my goal is to outline some of these events for you today. Here's the outline of what I'd like to discuss. For the brevity of the presentation, I chose to start by focusing on events surrounding European colonization and particularly focusing on treaties that led to our nation's removal uh, to a reservation in Indian territory. I will be briefly discussing events that will help you possibly see the past from a different perspective. Um, and then my hope is to connect that past with our modern nation and how we're situated on the reservation today. And then I'd also like to highlight some key meetings that have assisted in our mission of preserving the past for future generations. I wanted to start off with some definitions. Uh, the Creek Nation is a political body acknowledged in treaties um, with the United States and other sovereigns. Um, the Creek Nation is the sovereign in at least 28 of the Muscogee Nation's treaties. Uh, it is through these treaties that our st status as a sovereign was established, uh, from which we have carried on to this day. Um, and this may explain why the Creek is in parentheses in our name. Uh, the next term is Creek Confederacy. It's a term meant to describe in which the body politic uh, within the Creek Nation functioned, more akin to the Gaelic and German confederacies of Roman times. Uh, the description attempts to account for the fierce autonomous nature of tribal towns, but also their ability to unite for common good, whether it be military, economic, or social activities. Uh, another term is tribal town, uh, an autonomous political unit, also known as a tribe. Uh, sometimes a town will have a specific geographical space, but in this sense, it more closely relates to an identity. Um, but this is not what most people think of when they hear a town, so I wanted to make sure that that is well-defined. Also, I'd like to add that the Muscogee Nation is not a single tribe. It's a union of several towns, which were free to come and go as long as they followed Creek laws. The Shawnees, uh, Chickasaws, Alabamas, uh, were all part of the nation choosing to leave at later points in time. Of course, with the Alabamas, folks did also stay. Um, some tribes like the Uchi came into the nation and retained their own identity, including their own unique language. Um, and this, this confederacy has been basically written by historians as being one of the most sophisticated political organizations north of Mexico. Here's a brief timeline of some important colonial actions that impacted uh, the Creek people. I will cover some of these events in more detail below. Uh, the establishment of colonies are noted in green. Uh, St. Augustine, founded in 1565, um, 
markets itself as the oldest city in America. A better term, a more accurate term would be oldest European city in America. Um, the founding of Charlestown had impacts on trade and relations with other tribes as Europeans created a market for human chattel, human slaves. Um, the Indian slave uh, trade was uh, functioning and Charlestown was a major player in that. In 1675, land sessions uh, were first documented with a number of lords in the Cuso, uh, later term of the Cusabo, uh, but they were a Muscogean speaking group and they were related to the Cusa, a very prominent Creek Muscogean tribal town. Uh, last you'll see is the founding of Savannah in 1733. I note this is at the actual beginning of land sessions as the earlier Charleston agreement is not between sovereigns in the same capacity as Oglethorpe's were. Dion was originally destined for Polly's Island, um, but he found it ill-suited for a colony. They immediately began to go south where he established a colony near Sabalo Sound, near present-day Savannah. Um, established on September 29th, 1526, Dion died less than a month later. Uh, the colony then failed and most of the colonists had left by mid-November. The first colony was not arriving into an abandoned area. Muscogee folks were living all along the coast. This map shows a recreation of how some of those coastal towns were organized. There are some familiar town names present that I would like to point out, Ufology or Little Ufala, uh, as an important Creek tribal town whose oral traditions put them along the Georgia-South Carolina border uh, before relocating among the upper and lower creeks. Another name represented is Espagogi or Espag it says Espagachi, um, but it really is Espagogi, and Espagogi is another Creek town whose name was often interchangeable for the Creek Nation as a whole. Both Eufaula and Espagogi were towns um, that moved here to uh, Indian Territory. Eufaula is located in the southeastern corner of the reservation, and Espagogi's name was changed to Dustin, Oklahoma. Uh, upon statehood and the influx of Euro-Americans. Um, my goal is basically just to show that this area was not barren, it was populated uh, by Muscogean people. DeSoto's Entrada is often considered the beginning of history due to the fact that he had three written accounts of his adventures um, through the Southeast. Uh, there's a plethora of books written about this event, and if you're interested, I would direct you to um, Charles Hudson's Knights of Spain, Warriors of the Sun. He did a pretty good job using historical accounts and archaeology to uh, determine the route through the southeast. For the sake of this presentation, I'll just say that this was not a good experience for our ancestors, and I would characterize it as overwhelmingly negative. Um, but DeSoto's route uh, did provide important place names and stuff that we look back at today uh, to help reconstruct some of our history. DeLuna attempted a colony in Pensacola Bay. Unfortunately, or fortunately, a hurricane hit while these men were trying to unload the supplies. The colony was left broken and weak, um, lacking food and supplies, and so luckily for DeLuna, some of his men had been on DeSoto's uh, Entrada 20 years earlier, and so they sought out the Cusa for assistance, which they did ultimately secure. The Cusa capital is located in what people call the Cusawati Valley. Uh, it's derived from a Cherokee word meaning Old Creek Place or where the creek were. Um, their word for all of the Muscogean people is Anacusa. Um, and the site that DeSoto and DeLuna's men both went to visit the capital of the Cusa is known as the Little Egypt site, and it is currently inundated underneath the re-regulation reservoir for Carter's Lake and Murray County. Moving on to Pardo, uh, establishing a colony, colony in Santa Elena and heading northwest, Pardo documented the Catawba, Cherokee, and other groups. Uh, Pardo came to foment better relations uh, than his predecessors. Um, however, Muscogean people did not forget the actions of the, the previous uh, explorers and tried to lure Pardo into a trap. Um, ultimately, he caught wind of it and returned to the coast, and that actually begins a, about a hundred years of historical silence in the southeast interior. Moving on to land sessions. Between 1670 and 1786, the Muscogee people had treaties with the British Crown, the Spanish Crown, and the Colony of Georgia. In 1790, treaties with the United States began. The 33 Treaty of Savannah, which is the 
founding of Savannah uh, was done in a treaty. Um, and here's an excerpt from the Treaty of Savannah and a map from 1735. Uh, surprisingly, land boundaries were not discussed. The only agreement was that England can make use of lands currently not used by the Creek Nation. And I may offer a different perspective that this may have been something that was very localized in nature, meaning that Oglethorpe could set up on Yamacraw Bluff because there wasn't anybody living there at that time. They were actually living on Pipe Maker's Bluff. A closer look at the map reveals uh, more of what the prob the boundaries probably meant. Um, you know, the town of Savannah was uh, allowed to set up there on Yamacraw Bluff, but not advance over into Pipe Maker's Bluff. Um, and I believe this boundary would probably be around where Talmadge Memorial Bridge is today. However, the history books say that the boundaries were uh, were a little bit larger than what uh, the treaty indicates. Uh, even though that we just discussed, there were no boundaries covered. In 1739, James Oglethorpe. In 1739, James Oglethorpe traveled to Coweta, a prominent Muscogee uh, town located on the Chattahoochee River near present-day Columbus, Georgia. Uh, this treaty is where the boundaries. Um, were created that most people associate with the earlier treaty, uh, which included the tidal limits and most of the barrier islands. But there were some reservations in the treaty. Pipe Maker's Bluff, as mentioned earlier, would remain creek lands, as well as St. Catharines, Owasabal, and Sapelo Island, which would all be uh, creek lands held in common. However, the reserving of those lands called an issue for the um, for the English. And in 1757, they created the Treaty of Savannah, which was meant to remedy that situation. When pressed, the Creek delegation agreed that they had never sold the lands to an individual uh, and retained them in common. That part is most likely truer rather than false, as land was generally held in common rather than in, in, by individuals, uh, especially at this time. Uh, additionally, Miko Brim, or what historians refer to as Emperor Brim, had recently passed away, and uh, he was much more well-versed on negotiations with the British, um, but his son had to take his place. Um, it was under this treaty that uh, Pipe Maker's Bluff uh, and the islands, which were essentially the first Muscogee reservations, were ceded to the king. The 1763 treaty was in response to English victory in the French-Indian War and growing debts of the Muscogee Nation. It was also in, in accordance with the Proclamation of 1763, which forbade English subjects from settling west of a, a determined line by the king. And the 1763 Treaty of Augusta was the first of three Augusta treaties. The 1763 Treaty of Augusta, 1773 Treaty of Augusta, and the 1783 Treaty of Augusta. To add confusion, uh, without clearly defining lands, English officials had two identical treaty documents made. Uh, they were both they were signed by both Cherokee and Creek Nation. You'll notice that I did not include information regarding the 1783 Treaty of Augusta. This treaty was enacted under America's previous form of governance, uh, the Articles of Confederation, which created an incredibly weak central government while promoting the powers of the states. Uh, there were inherent problems with this type of government, which is why the American founders created the Constitution. Uh, the 1783 Treaty of Augusta was caught up in that power struggles between the federal government and the states. And ultimately, the federal government was determined to be the sovereign. Uh, and this invalidated the 1783 Treaty of Augusta, the 1785 Treaty of Galfington, and the 1786 Treaty of Shoulderbone Creek. This slide represents the first treaty between the United States and the Creek Nation. The 1790 Treaty of New York saw the largest land session by the Creek Nation at the time. It added uh, basically doubled the size of uh, Georgia, which was mostly confined to between the Savannah and Ogeechee rivers and the coast. Have you ever heard of the term five civilized tribes? Uh, I hope you have. If not, I blame the education system here in America. Uh, every history book should mention something about that, even though the term is not something that we use or agree with nowadays because uh, all folks are civilized. Um, but this began in earnest in the 1796 Treaty of Coleraine, uh, where implements, uh, blacksmiths, and 
livestock were sent to the Creek Nation to change the way in which we operated. Um, the first demonstration of the European plow was actually conducted in 1797 at Eupatoy Town, which is on Fort Benning, um, but it had been near Casita uh, back in the day. The additional need for land uh, led to the 1802 Treaty of Fort Wilkinson. This occurred in June of 1802. And unknown to the Creek people at that time was that the United States and Georgia had entered into a compact uh, in April that sold portions of Georgia to the United States for $1.25 million. Uh, this would be the, one of those colonial land sessions. It was actually the last land session of the United States uh, with the co colonies. Uh, but what is less known about the compact is that there was a stipulation that the federal government would extinguish Creek Nation's land holdings within the state of Georgia, uh, meaning that this basically marked the beginning of bad faith on behalf of the United States. The 1805 Treaty of Washington, the 1814 Treaty of Fort Jackson. I will not get in much detail regarding this treaty other than that it was illegal under the 1814 Treaty of Ghent that the US and Britain signed at the conclusion of the War of 1812. The 1814 Treaty of Jackson um, ceded 22 million acres to the US for to cover the cost of war in which a total of one US Army Regiment, the 39th Infantry Regiment fought. Andrew Jackson actually forced the sessions on his allies uh, as the lands that this treaty encompassed were mostly belonged to those who assisted him in his endeavor to defeat the Red Sticks. This uh, treaty was designed to clear up some boundaries and pay debts in the north. Uh, they tried to separate Muscogee and Cherokee because the fear of us and to the Cherokees uniting and pushing back against the aggressive stance of the United States was a very real possibility. In 1821, uh, the Treaty of Indian Springs, this signaled a new way in which our nation interacted with the US. Our National Council saw the US identifying individuals to promote, make wealthy, and more favorable for US interest. Um, this treaty has set aside 16, about 1,600 acres, 640 for the Macon Reserve, and 1,000 acres for General McIntosh's plantation. The 1821 treaty forced the National Council to pass laws that prevented land sessions without approval of the National Council. Uh, this law would be tested four years later. The 1825 Treaty of Indian Springs is the only ratified treaty between the United States and Native nations to be revoked. Um, it, there were clear and obvious cases of bribery and fraud, which is why the U.S. ultimately rejected it. And for the Creek Nation, it violated the aforementioned Creek Nation laws. Um, the crime was punishable by death. Arguments were made at the National Council uh, and ultimately death sentences were handed out. Our lawmenders or light horsemen executed the parties responsible. A lot of history books use words like murder and assassinate, but unfortunately those are incorrectly used. Since this is a law and individuals violated those laws, the sentence carried out means that they were executed under a law. The 1826 treaty was meant to finally remove the Creeks from Georgia. While less favorable than the previous 1825 Treaty of Indian Springs, uh, it was legal under Muscogee law. The United States had actually failed to capture all the land left in Georgia for the Creeks and had to create a new treaty. Many Mikos objected to this treaty and some even sent people to live up there to prevent the land from being taken. And this ba this treaty basically accomplishes what the U.S. had set out to do 25 years prior and extinguish Creek Nation's title to Georgia lands. The 1832 Treaty of Casita. Uh, Article 1 says the Creek tribe of Indians ceded the United States all their land east of the Mississippi River. It created private ownership of lands in lieu of communal lands. Individuals were often led to sell their land due to, due to a number of misdeeds. Um, and before long, many Creeks had no land, no food, and found themselves in very dire situations. Uh, the treaty encouraged Creeks to immigrate west like the McIntosh Party had done in 1827 and promised supplies and assistance. Um, another important article of this was the Creek Nation country west of the Mississippi shall solemnly be guaranteed to the Creek Indians no state or territory shall ever have the right to pass laws and government of such Indians, uh, and we will be allowed to govern ourselves. 
However, conflict rose. Um, the Second Creek War started and Andrew Jackson's push to remove the remaining Cherokee um, basically meant that forced removal was in store for every Creek citizen remaining in their ancestral homelands. Ethnic cleansing wasn't a coin phrase until the Yugoslav conflict, um, defined as a mass expulsion or killing of members of an unwanted ethnic or religious group in society. The Indian Removal Act was ethnic cleansing of Native Americans out of their homelands. Um, this slide represents 10 years of removal with early volunteer migrations, as well as those who were removed by force. Tribal towns often were removed together, uh, which led to what folks call cultural continuity among tribal towns in Alabama and those in Indian Territory. This map also shows the original track of Muscogee land extending all the way to the Texas Panhandle. The map on this slide represents Indian Territory between 1856 and 1866. Uh, a division of land for the Seminole was conducted through treaty in 1856 uh, to provide them a place to call their own. After the 1866 Reconstruction Treaty, in which the Creek to sell over 250,000 acres for 30 cents an acre, this is what our reservation looked like. Um, the land was used to put other removed tribes, such as the Kickapoo, Sac and Fox, Shawnee, and still even further west, uh, Oklahoma Territory. So today, the Oklahoma capital sits on lands Creek Nation was forced to sell. Uh, this map also shows the locations of 44 tribal towns that reestablished in Indian Territory. Built in 1867, this is the first Creek Nation Council House after establishing our national capital in Old Mulgee, Oklahoma. It would not have been Oklahoma at that time. A few years later, the National Council passed funds for a new council house. The old one was burned down and a new one constructed in its place in 1878. Luckily, the Creek Nation was able to purchase the property back and renovate and preserve the site. Uh, we reopened it in 2008 to the public. Uh, it is on the National Register of Historic Places, and if you ever are in town, we hope that you can make it. This is where I'd like to transition to the present. Uh, all this past history only brings us to who we are as a nation today, uh, and it's important to link the past with the modern people. Um, and, and it's just as important as knowing the past. So what I'd like to cover today is a little bit of the overview, government, uh, some statistics, healthcare, education, and law enforcement. <clears throat> the Muscogee Nation is the fourth largest uh, population with over 87,000 citizens. Uh, based on the FY17 impact study, the Muscogee Nation has an economic impact of over $1 billion. Um, led by a democratically elected executive and, and legislative branch, the nation operates on a $300 million budget and employs over 4,000 people. The nation has programs that focus on providing vital services such as healthcare, house, housing, education, and social services. The Muscogee Creek Nation has three branches of government, similar to the United States. The executive office is led by the principal chief, the legislative branch is led by the National Council, and the judicial branch consists of district courts and the Muscogee Nation Supreme Court. The executive branch is led by Principal Chief David Hill and Second Chief Del Beaver. Uh, link below can be used to find out more information. Under the previous constitution, the National Council was a bicameral legislative body consisting of the House of Warriors and a House of Kings, and representation came from the tribal towns within the Creek Nation. Under the new constitution, a change in the electoral process fomented a change to a unicameral legislative body. Uh, the photo here is the 21st National Council under the new constitution. Under the inherent sovereign authority of the Muscogee Nation, our nation's citizens ratified the modern Muscogee Nation Constitution on October 6, 1979. The Supreme Court was reestablished by Article 7 of that Constitution. Uh, the court is vested with exclusive appellate jurisdiction over civil and criminal matters uh, that fall underneath Muscogee jurisdiction and serves as the final interpretive authority on Muscogee law. The court consists of seven judges who serve six year terms after nomination by the principal chief and confirmed by the National Council. Annually, the court selects uh, from its members the chief justice and vice chief justice. Harkening back to the 1866 treaty boundaries, uh, this is the Muscogee Creek Nation Reservation. The reservation consists of 11 whole and partial counties and is over 4,000 square miles. 
The map shows eight voting districts uh, for our electorate. Uh, within the reservation, there are 69 cities and towns, including nearly all of Tulsa, Oklahoma's second largest city, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma's fourth largest city. There are 23 Creek community centers and 71 different school districts. Healthcare is one of the foundational responsibilities of our nation. There are six clinics across the reservation and two community uh, hospitals that provide health care in rural areas. Uh, recently, to provide physical rehabilitation for citizens and elders, the Muskogee Creek Nation expanded by incorporating the George Nye Rehabilitation Center and opening the first Muskogee Creek Nation Physical Rehabilitation Center. Clinics and hospitals are spread across the reservation to reach as many citizens as possible. In terms of benefiting all Oklahomans, the state of the art hospital built in Okima is a great example. Doctors travel from Oklahoma City to work out of some of the facilities there uh, to treat local patients, uh, but the town of Okima doesn't even have a stoplight. So I just want to re reiterate how our nation providing community hospitals to some of these communities is beneficial for the entire community. A lot of folks don't know that our nation has a college, so I want to take a moment and recognize our nation's Institute of Higher Learning. Uh, the College of Muskogee Nation is an accredited tribal college um, designated to educate students in seven different degree paths. The college recently added an associate's degree of natural resources to provide education and sustainable management of land and natural resources. This college also offers a number of certificates, including gaming, language, and learning outcomes. Situated very near to the Oklahoma State Institute of Technology in Omogi, the college has a special partnership in place with both Oklahoma State University and the University of Oklahoma to provide educational opportunities that benefit Muskogee citizens. The Light Horse are our nation's law enforcement professionals. Uh, the Tribal Police Department has 58 employees that serve in Criminal Investigation Division, Communication Division, and Patrol Division. Uh, we have trained canine units, a sex offender registry that feeds into a federal registry, and there are several different, uh, several cross deputizations uh, across the reservation that allow the Light Horsemen to assist uh, local municipalities in a variety of ways. The Historic Cultural Preservation Department serves as the primary contact for statutory and regulatory compliance with federal laws. This includes the National Historic Preservation Act, NEPA, NAGPRA, which is Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, as well as some others that may not necessarily be known, including the Endangered Species Act, the Bald Eagle and Gold Eagle Protection Act, and the Migratory Bird Species Act. Uh, our office is very engaged and in, in FY18 reviewed over 4,600 projects uh, for the year, but in the first half of FY19, we reviewed over 4,000 projects. This last section brings us to why we are interested in what Savannah District does, how it manages lands and waterways and serves as a steward of our ancestral homelands. We're known as creeks because we live near rivers and waterways. A lot of these waterways have been impounded and sites have been inundated, or, or there may be even permits uh, for water crossings and the occasional impact of an old cultural site. This is why our department wants to build a very strong relationship with Savannah District. Having long since been forced out of the area, we try our best to preserve those sites as testaments to our presence there and preventing them from being erased. Uh, because Muskogee history is unique and separate from the United States, but it's also deeply intertwined. And it's through this shared view of history that these sites can be saved for future generations. I wanted to highlight a visit from Savannah District Commander, uh, Colonel Hibner. He made a visit to Indian Country back when he first took command, along with uh, Rodney Parker District Regulatory Archaeologist and Tribal Liaison, and they hosted a listening session where tribal rep representatives discussed uh, their goals, processes and what they want to see from the district. What was pleasantly surprising was a lot of these goals of the district overlapped with the goals of the tribe. And from there, we believe that our relationship with Savannah District has only increased and our partnership with them has only become stronger. This last slide is meant to highlight what good partnerships can make happen. Uh, due to certain permitting actions, the Muskogee Creek Nation, along with the Corps, were able to define and assess the Oconee traditional property in Greene County. Named after the Oconee, a town of Muskogean people whose descendants can be found in Muskogee Creek Nation, the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, and the Seminole Tribe of Florida. The property represents a woodland era mound and Mississippian farmsteads, as well as inundated sites below Lake Oconee. The TCP was determined eligible and now must be accounted for in management practices. There are not very many TCPs across the United States, and this is no small task. 
it, it was only through accomplished through the partnerships with the Savannah Corps and the Muscogee Creek Nation working together. The image on the right uh, is a mural from Columbus, Georgia. It is a mural of Hobithli Yehola. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at the address above, thunt at mcn-nsn.gov. Uh, all right, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Mado to gay,